Hello everyone and welcome back to A Dash of OT. My name is Celia and today I wanted to talk about different types of orthoses available for burn survivors. I recently just finished up a topic on burns in my applied orthopedics class and I made this Canva in order to uh, fulfill a option for a um, assignment. And yeah, so a little bit of background knowledge about burns. Um, usually a skin graft is involved if it is a deep partial or full thickness uh, burn um, or circumferential. Um, usually skin grafts take about three to five days to set into the uh, client's existing skin. And you always want to uh, promote active range of motion or any kind of movement so that uh, contractures are not formed. Um, of course, with physician's approval, you definitely don't want to move the patient if they are not ready. Um, some interventions are, of course, preventing contractures. You want to reduce edema and you want to elevate, if any kind of movement is taking place, you want to elevate that part of the, bar, the body, um, again, to reduce the edema. Um, you definitely want to focus on patient and family education, um, especially regarding wound care and dressing and different occupational adaptations that they may use for ADLs. Um, and in the future, at a different setting, um, IADLs. You definitely want to focus on um, also talking about the splints with the staff so that they are aware how to properly put them on, um, including the patient and the family. Make sure somebody knows how to use the splintings um, so that the client will have the best outcome. So moving on, there are three types of positions of function or anti-deformity levels. So the first level would be a static orthosis. Um, this is like the acute phase right after the patient gets a skin graft. And this is like a protective kind of device. A static progressive is a level up and it prevents contractures after skin grafting. Um, this is also if you see that the range of motion is not improving when they have the static orthosis, then you move up a level. And then lastly, there's a dynamic orthosis, which kind of stretches and provides resistance to a contracture um, to prevent a contracture too. And so I just listed a bunch of different types of splints. Um, for example, there's a halo neck splint for an anterior neck burn. Um, there's a back brace spinal support for the chest if it got burned. There are finger extension splints and C-bar splints uh, for the thumb, as well as like web space if the client burned their hand. You definitely wanna keep those web spaces um, flexible and, and uh, abducted so that they continu can continue to use their fingers uh, once their burn is healed. Um, there's a mouth splint which prevents the mouse from shrinking. So it keeps the mouth open so that, you know, there isn't a contracture and that would prevent them, you know, from performing their ADLs of eating and drinking. Um, there is a gutter or trial splint for the knee. And of course there's a thumb spica orthosis slash traction. It's also called a banjo, a sandwich or a bivalve. And those are all for wrist and hand and thumb burns. Um, there's also an airplane or an abduction burn, uh, splint orthosis. And this is to prevent contracture at the axilla or shoulder if the client was burned um, towards like the inside of their arm or their um, rib cage, this would help. And I provided some pictures of some of, a few of these splints. Um, like I said, the airplane or auxiliary splint this is how it, you know, kind of wings. If the client is not abducting their arm, then that would prevent a contracture and they would get a wing effect and they would not be able to abduct their arm once the burn is healed. 
There's a dynamic elbow splint. This is helpful with resistance if they got a burn on their exterior arm. And then there's a position of function wrist hand splint, which is kind of the, the sandwich kind of looking one. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit on uh, orthoses to use for burns. Thank you.